And so uh, earlier on, uh, uh, Kenyatta called in and he was talking about how, you know, we've got, I, I was saying we've got tax cuts or, you know, the Republican Party is all about big corporations and polluters and billionaires with a side of racism. And he was like, no, no, the racism is at the front. And he's absolutely right, of course. Uh, but there's also misogyny. There's also the hatred of women and, of course, homophobia as well. I, 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 the misogyny part is particularly troubling. And there's a, a new study that was just published by the uh, UN uh, Development. Yeah, this is a new UN report. It's called the Gender Social Norms Index. It was published by the UN Development Program on Monday, today. And they looked at 80 countries around the world and asked them questions, the, the answers to which they asked, you know, civilians in these countries, citizens in these countries, questions, the answers to which would elicit an indication that there is some sort of anti-woman bias among these, among people answering the questions. And they were asking both men and women. Half of the people in 80 countries believe that men make better political leaders. 40% believe men are better business executives, and a quarter, 25% of all the people in 80 countries believe it is justified for men to beat their wives. The, uh, one of the uh, researchers with uh, Oxfam Great Britain, uh, uh, Anam Parvez, said this is truly alarming and explains why the world is completely off track in, in achieving gender equality. Uh, one in five women in 2021, this, the, the latest statistics that we have are a year and a half old. In 2021, one in five women were married before they turned 18 around the world, or in these 80 countries. 1.7 billion women and girls live on less than $5.50 a day. Women continue to take on three times as much unpaid care and domestic work as do men around the world. And uh, Parvez says, at the current rate of progress, it will take 186 years to close gaps in uh, legal protections for women. Remember when, uh, when Rush Limbaugh, I mean, I used, to, I used to play the ad on the program just to, to attack it, just to point out, you know, this is just the naked misogyny of Rush Limbaugh. This was a decade or so ago. He, he was playing an ad for the Hillary Clinton nutcracker. And then somebody came out and manufactured one, and they were selling them on Russia's web, web, website, and they were selling them in, you know, Republican stores and things. It was, you know, a, a, literally a Hillary Clinton nutcracker. And it was just, you know, any any called women, femi you know, progressive women, feminazis. And this was acceptable dialogue within the GOP in, you know, from the 80s up until just up until what two years ago when Rush Limbaugh died. And, and certainly still is. The author, one of the authors of the study said, and I quote, we have experienced a serious backlash and rollback of women's rights, most notably in Afghanistan, but also in the Western world with the election of Donald Trump and in South Korea, where an anti-feminist president was elected recently. Uh, he says, uh, or she says rather, what makes me hopeful is that in the majority, the younger part of the population clearly resents this backlash and is striving for a more equal society. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's hope so. I mean, you know, here we have Candace Owens, you know, Candace Owens, the big uh, Republican person and uh, I, I believe she has a talk show. She's a you know, regular in Fox News and whatnot. She was at uh, Turning Points USA this weekend. They, they had, you know, this is the Charlie Kirk's, I believe, group, uh, you know, hardcore right wing. They, they uh, I think it was at Turning Points USA that they had the guy doing the, essentially the Sig Heil uh, six months ago. Anyhow, Candace Owens says, the truth is we got here from women. The transgendered movement has been ushered in by women. I was explaining this to Charlie just now on his radio show. I said that every ill we are facing right now in society has been brought forth by women. Now, maybe that's, you know, this is a verbatim quote, but maybe it is misinterpreted. Maybe she meant to say every ill in society is the result of a tax on women. I don't know, is, is Candace Owen taking that position or is she this generation's Phyllis Schlafly? 
you know, who single-handedly stopped the Equal Rights Amendment. The late Phyllis Schlafly, I should say. But, you know, this is kind of alarming stuff. And this incredible crazy alert that's also speaking at the Turning Point USA's Young Women's Leadership Conference, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Satan hates women because he can't have babies. Well, I mean, maybe, maybe that's what Rush Limbaugh was all about. This is what she said. She said, ladies, you have a great enemy and it hates you because of who you are because you're a woman. Well, yeah. But who? She says, Satan, known to be a fall, fallen angel. He was known to be beautiful. And he wanted to be the most beautiful one. I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. I'm not paraphrasing, but I'm hopping around in the quote. She said, that's why Satan hates you. There's another right reason why Satan hates women. It's because women can do something Satan can't do, and he wants to be able to do. Satan cannot cre create life, but women can. Well, you know, if, if we're talking about men rather than Satan, sometimes I wonder if that is the basis of a lot of misogyny. Not, you know, as much as it kind of makes me cringe to give Marjorie Taylor Greene any credibility for her quotes, but is... Is, you know, is, is men's hate, is the fear and hate of women that is so pervasive among men because men can't produce children? I, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't understand the basis of this. I really don't. Uh, maybe somebody can explain it to me. Why, why do men hate women? I, I, I'm, I mean, I, you know, I get it that there, there are, you know, this is, this goes back 8,000, 10,000 years, men are physically typically stronger, and so, you know, they just asserted themselves and took over, and they kept women, quote, in their place for 8,000 years. Um, that uh, uh, Daniel Quinn talks in his Ishmael book, talks about how the agricultural revolution, and, and even the, the five or 10,000 years preceding the agricultural revolution, when there was the pastoral re revolution, when we started herding animals, and, and we started breeding animals, and breeding animals, you know, the, the females, animals became the, 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 the breeding stock. And, and basically, as the agricultural revolution came along, men started viewing women as breeding stock. And, and thus, you know, our culture, I mean, this, this is in the Bible, this is, this, this is literally for eight, 10,000 years has been at the core of what we would call Western civilization. And you find it in, in some Aboriginal Indigenous societies as well, you know, that men are completely in charge. In others, it's very much not the case. So it's a, it's, it's a, it's a good thing that we have a generation coming up right now that is saying enough already. We're tired of the Hillary Clinton nutcrackers. We're, we're tired of the feminazi rhetoric. We're tired of, the, of men dominating women. We're tired of men you know, being the, the, the majority of political offic officials, elected officials. We're tired of men being the, the people who are running all the corporations. Um, there's a fair, fairly good and robust body of evidence that when women run things from governments to corporations, that when women run things, they run better. And I, you know, I, I could tell you, you know, Louise and I have started what, I think seven businesses in the 50 years we've been married, and you know five really substantial ones. And in most cases, Louise ended up running the business. She runs this business, and you know, of, our, of our radio show. She's a much better manager than I am. I'm not sure that it's because she's a woman. It might just be because she's brilliant, but uh, you know, I think there is demonstrably a lot to this. And I realize, you know, oh, people say, well, what about Maggie Thatcher? Well, you know, there's always exceptions to the rule. So anyhow, let's move along. Um, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to hit the break here and, and move along to Christian nationalism and biblical literalism, which I, I think kind of steps off what I was just talking about, because, you know, we're talking about how the oppression of women is literally built into the Bible. Something else is built into the Bible too, magical thinking. And what does that mean for modern society in an age of wild conspiracy theories that are causing people to die? I'll tell you about that after the break.